uh, good evening, madam sirs. Uh, today I'm presenting a case of a distal uh, third leg defect. So this is a 59-year-old um, male patient who is an accountant by profession residing in Kochi, presented with a uh, injury to the right leg, and he was unable to wait there. So he came. One day after the RTA, he was referred from a local hospital. And, uh, and this RTA was a two-wheeler versus a pickup truck um, uh, accident. And he uh, complains of a wound on the right lower leg involving the outer aspect as well as on the uh, inner aspect, which is actually a through and through wound. And uh, he doesn't have any LOC, loss of consciousness, vomiting or headache. And he was admitted in the orthopedics with both bone fracture right leg as well as and uh, he and uh, plastic surgery consultation was received for the leg wound. Uh, there was no history of uh, smoking, alcoholism, no comorbidities, no previous surgeries, no drug allergies. Uh, this is the uh, presenting picture. <coughs> Uh, so, uh, on examination, there is actually a um, five into six centimeter um, defect, soft tissue defect uh, involving the lateral aspect of the lower leg. Uh, it is um, extending from almost up, up till the distally up till the uh, lateral malleolus and proximally five centimeter, six centimeter uh, proximally, and uh, it is um, um, medially it is reaching up to the anterior compartment muscles and um, and posteriorly it is reaching uh, up to the posterior compartment but not reach but not uh, reaching the posterior compartment or and uh, the floor of the the defect is formed by necrotic muscles. Uh, then um, part of the fibula is exposed and uh, uh, various tendons are avulsed. So this was the, uh, and uh, there is another wound, which is a through and through wound uh, on the uh, medial aspect. This is present almost uh, four centimeter above the medial malleolus, above and behind the medial malleolus. And the size of the defect is three into two centimeter. Um, it has got um, uh, part of the tibia exposed through the bone, through the defect. And uh, surrounding uh, tissue in the previous wound, the first described wound is confused, the especially the uh, proximal part. Whereas um, the the this uh, the the medial part, medial wound has surrounding tissue normal. So, uh, show, show me the X ray again. Yeah, okay. I said, I said. So, right. this is um, this is the X ray taken immediately. Okay. This was after the external fixation. So, uh, uh, so uh, I was just describing the uh, thing. So, by uh, chronological order, the general examination actually he was moder moderately built and nourished. Alert and cooperative oriented attitude wise, he was lying in supine position with knee in extension, ankle in slight plantar flexion. There was no pallor. Uh, the pulse rate and BP was stable. And uh, this is the local examination that, uh, that I have uh, told from the inspectory findings I have already mentioned, sir. Uh, apart from that, the palpate, palpatory findings. Uh, all the inspectory findings were confirmed and tenderness was, was present and distal pulsation dorsalis pedis as well as the posterior tibial artery pulsation were palpable uh, the, there was uh, some paresthesia uh, on the dorsum of the foot and movement wise there is restriction of flexion and extension at the knee joint and uh, he was also having a um, proximal tibial fracture, sir, which was noted uh, on the X-ray. And uh, there was the planned of flexion was possible, but it was restricted due to pain. Uh, and the eversion, the uh, dorsiflexion was uh, restricted completely, and the eversion was restricted at the angle joint.
so can i yeah yeah please. go with the diag diagnosis so a diagnosis of gessler anderson type 3 b open fracture both bone with skin and soft tissue defect on the lateral as well as medial aspect of the distal third of the right leg and the closed proximal tibial fracture was made so apart from the routine blood investigations uh, and the x-rays uh, we did a color doppler study to assess the uh, to vascularity of the limb as well as the patency of the distal uh, vessels and a wound a swab um, was taken for and sent for culture and sensitivity and uh, we proceeded with the uh, primary deployment under uh, no, what was the control. what was the finding of the color doppler regarding the main vascular uh, axis the posterior tibial peroneal vessels so all, all the three main vascular trunks were preserved sir okay posterior tibial, they have commented on the posterior tibial and anterior tibial uh, on and that was uh, commented as a triphasic flow sir normal triphasic flow okay but uh, and the uh, did you could you see any condition of the perforators adjacent to the defects in color doppler uh, sir color doppler was actually done by the radiologist so uh, we now we couldn't let, see let, that let, let me just uh, put this point uh, of importance because this is an academic uh, exercise uh, radiologist as i said uh, physiologist anatomist forensic people radiologist they don't know about perforators they don't know the importance of perforators so whenever in such situation and they don't know what you want to see you want to see perforators and the main vessel they will talk only about main vessel yes sir. so but we are interested about, about the perforators also so in yes, fact sir. for for uh, in academic institution it is always better to you know fix up these cases uh, maybe away from your routine operating time and opd time and sit with them and try to tell them that show me the vessel and show me the smaller vessels which are coming out of it. Until as you sit with them and then measure the from the fixed bony landmass, keep a tape with you, then you will not be benefited by their uh, reporting. This is what used to happen to me and then I always used to go to them around 4 p.m. after all the activities are out. So I think it will be useful because we are interested in the perforators. As well as main vessel, of course. So don't blame radiologists. Radiologists won't give you the uh, the findings which you really are interested in. <laughs> this is my experience. Yeah. Yes. Carry on, please. Carry on. Yes. What do you think, oh, sir, Dr. Sandeep? Uh, Dr. Sandeep, any comment? Uh, yes, sir, that's exactly, sir, because uh, this is exactly, it's very important that the uh, people actually go to the radiology department, be with the radiologist and actually listen and see, because what they are looking for is not what we are looking for. <laughs> exactly. So I think that's very important, like you said. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, carry on, please. Oh, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, sir, sorry, primary debridement and the tunicate control, an external fix, an angle spanning external fixator was applied by the uh, ortho team. And uh, we also, uh, and uh, this, uh, I would, uh, we also applied the back therapy and uh, once the wound is clean my plan is once the wound is clean and healthy i will plan for a flap cover and uh, uh, plan a would be an androlateral tie free flap cover with a vastus lateralis muscle and uh, plan b will be a uh, graceless muscle free flap with uh, skin grafting plan c is a perforator based flap and uh, 
on plan D is my plan D is cross leg flaps. Right. So uh, why you want to apply back? Uh, sir, actually, uh, uh, after debridement, it was uh, we, the patient came after one day. Uh, so there was some features of contamination. So uh, we want to uh, make the wound clean and uh, healthy for the for flap. So you want to say that uh, flaps, you mean to say that back will take care of infection. <laughs> will it? No, oh, sir, actually. Back, back will actually help in reducing the. Uh, this bacterial load and all if it is infected, sir. So actually, I wanted to know from you that uh, suppose you do regular debridement, give a systemic antibiotic as per the culture report, and uh, uh, of course, back will not allow you to do regular uh, debridement. So what would you prefer, regular surgical debridement in such cases along with systemic antibiotic or systemic antibiotic plus back? Because so back back will not allow you to visualize the wound very frequently, no? Yes, sir, yes, sir. But in this case, we'll have uh, we'll uh, open the back early, sir, within 72 hours, and we'll uh, uh, mostly we'll plan for a flap cover, sir, and we'll get the culture reports uh, meanwhile also, sir. Yeah, because in such situation, the you know the examiner usually will ask you justify your back application. <laughs> we service uh, regular deprivement and wound inspection. So how the wound is progressing? It may it may vary. Yes, I mean, sir. you can use back. I'm not against back, but you have to justify it because uh, there are de definitive indication for back. That's why I asked. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, so what is the uh, like? What the is asking us now? What is the advantage of vac? I mean, is there any advantage for vac, or why do you put a vac? You still not answer that question. Uh, sir, actually, uh, when uh, if we put a vac, we don't need not do uh, so daily dressing or that is one thing. Second, but it that, can. But uh, okay, uh, that is one point. Okay, so to counter that point. My take is no, because if you're actually doing a daily dressing, in case you find that there's some necrosis happening, because it's a crush injury, there could be still some necrotic muscles or something uh, could happen uh, probably in the first course of day, and then you could immediately do a wet side abdomen for the same. No? But if you're putting back and then you have lost that opportunity, you will not be able to do that. When you're opening after 72 hours, it, there might be contaminated and maybe even necrotic tissue which could have been infected also. Even though you put a vac, if there is necrosis, that tissue is having a problem. So the most important thing that has to happen is a thorough debrima under magnification. Okay, whenever you're doing the primary debrima, that has to be done properly. It has to be with magnification and you have to make sure that all the tissues uh, which you suspect are dead are removed. Okay, and uh, the, probably the only thing that you retain would be the uh, vessels and, uh, and nerves, okay, so that the rest of the things, wherever you have a doubt, you have to clean it up. The skin edges, if you feel that it's not looking good, you have to do a proper uh, debris of the skin edges. So, so that so, is a very important thing. Yeah. In case so in sometimes the, you, you, yeah. Please, please. Yeah, in case uh, you have a pulse lavage, you might use a pulse lavage also if it is highly contaminated for uh, removing the dirt, etc. It has got a yes, uh, bad effect also that it can actually drive in some of the material into the tissue also. So it's a double edged sweat. But uh, a usual uh, saline irrigation and cleaning up with the uh, curate and using uh, sharp uh, dissection for actually removing all the dead tissue is, I think, a good way of doing a debris. Okay. But back is yes. not the thing that is going to change your dynamics. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to emphasize in the, the examination. Don't jump with the answer of uh, back application. 
because uh, as a surgeon, we'd like to see the wound in such a compound wounds almost every day. And uh, since it is a, you know, uh, gastrol of three types, so the uh, medullary canal is also exposed. So how much the back is going to really affect all the depth of the tissues. Uh, so you must know the indication of back. That's what I mean. So, and it is costly also. So uh, uh, you have to assess that also that uh, how much benefit you are getting out of back and how much you are spending, how, the, how much the patient is spending. In some institution, it may be free, but in otherwise, you have to keep that also in mind because the examiner is likely to ask all these questions. Yes, sir. Yes, carry on. So when will you, when will be your first choice as a ALT flap? Uh, visa is a perpetrator based flap. How do you justify why you have chosen ALT and not a local flap? Uh, sir, actually, um, the wound is lying over the perennial artery. See, 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 in the examination, it is all how you defend. Everything, whatever yes. you said, is possible. How you yes. defend your statement, that is important. Yes, sir. So uh, there are two reasons, like, sir. Uh, one is that uh, we have a lateral wound as well as a medial wound. The lateral wound uh, is involving the peren perennial artery uh, perforator tertiary, sir, as well as the medial wound involves the posterior uh, tibial artery perforator. Uh, so uh, there is a possibility that the perforators can be injured or contused. So there is a likely possibility of uh, flap loss. Second, uh, uh, for complex uh, uh, defects like this, our institutional protocol is uh, more towards a free flap, sir. Right. So actually, what I uh, what you should appreciate as a uh, postgraduate is that an external force, which has caused both bone fracture, that means the force has traveled through the skin up to the bone, must have damaged the adjacent perforators. So unless you have a sort of angiographic evaluation and uh, justification, the adjacent perforators are likely to be damaged and a local flap may be risky. Yes. So this, this, this uh, transmission of force from outside to inside causing so much of damage to the bone uh, it has to be kept in mind. And therefore, uh, a free flap may be the correct answer. Yes. So if you say that it is our institutional policy, uh, some of the examiner may not agree. So you have to justify in this way that the adjacent perforators <laughs> of the uh, posterior tibial and peroneal are doubtful, which can be confirmed by say color Doppler, audio Doppler, whatever you want or angiography. And therefore we have chosen a free flap. This should be your answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So it's just a, you know how you place it, how you how, how you frame your sentence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your this sentence that I, these are institutional policy will come from your boss uh, at the end uh, uh, to defend you. Uh, but, you know, in the examination, the examiner tries to see your uh, attitude and aptitude and how you are thinking about it and the rationality yes. behind it. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Dr. Lakshmi, you are not contributing. What is your idea? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, definitely uh, the <laughs> Crush, what we see in this wound, uh, uh, fracture of both bones and crush of the muscles and uh, tendons on both sides, uh, where it is very tough to assess uh, the how many perforators uh, injured and all. But definitely, uh, the proximal perforators uh, uh, can be assessed and, uh, uh, as you said, uh, confirming with uh, the angiogram. 
if the facilities for the microvascular are not available you cannot leave the wound like that definitely right. you should assess the perforator and do the propeller flap okay right yes yes ma'am yes the uh, proximal perforator how uh, proximal it is located and uh, uh, the uh, possibility of the transferring the tissue uh you should always keep in mind suppose the suppose a non traumatized perforator is visualized or assessed say about 3 cm above the uh, yes. proximal wound margin from the say from the say posterior tibial area because the most of the wound is on the peroneal okay. territory so suppose on the posterior tibial territory 3 cm above the proximal wound margin you find a nice perforator undamaged what will be your uh, procedure of this perforator is there sir a propeller flap can be planned sir i will plan for a propeller flap uh, such that the uh, I, i will add the Uh, five centim the three centimeter from the distance from the uh, proximal end of the defect plus the defect uh, di um, dimension of six centimeter. And, But the uh, question is that most the larger wound is on the peroneal side, and you have a perforator on the posterior tibial side, or maybe on the peroneal side as well. So the things will vary. You have two wounds. and actually this actually the uh, the wound of the peroneal side the skin has retracted so uh, almost uh, one third distal one third that retracted skin seems to be healthy so that can be pulled up and your wound size becomes less yes so uh, so what are the options as madam is asking local regional plan may order ah sir as you told earlier sir i can actually devise a inferiorly based perforator flap and delay it and then put it sir from okay. the posterior tibial artery to artery sir uh, uh, or i can plan the same from the uh, uh, from the peroneal artery perforator sir as a propeller flap sir so the other option is that if the perforator is uh, undamaged and uh, you know it can be used then you can use a perforator based adipofacial flap also from the calf area because you have large dimension of uh, adipose tissue there so an adipofacial yes, flap can be turned over to the defect yes sir yes sir yes. in both the situations peroneal side as well as the and it's a single stage procedure okay sir. but we have talked about the skin coverage what about the underlying tendon you have said tendons are damaged yes uh, sir actually uh, on ex examination on after after debridement it was found that the extensive digitorum tendon was avulsed and uh, it was damaged uh, completely there was a loss of tendon also whereas the uh, ehl as well as the tibialis anterior was preserved and part of the peroneal uh, peroneus brevis uh, and longus was contused sir uh, so the extensive digitorum um, tendon i will i, I would just uh, remove all the um, uh, avulsed and contused part sir and uh, i would not go for a immediate reconstruction of the extensive digitorum i will plan for a later sir uh, my immediate uh, uh, immediate aim is to cover the defect sir so tendon will deal uh, as a secondary procedure as a secondary procedure sir exactly agreed now during this period how will you keep the limb what will be the position of the ankle during this uh, recovery phase and then you have given a flap that survived when we how how will you keep the position of the ankle in what should be the ankle position sir one more uh, thing i want to ask at this juncture yes, please. as is the uh, 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 
uh, choice is uh, the free flap and there is a loss of uh, uh, muzzle and the tendon. Uh, he can as well take the, as he's taking the vastus lateralis muzzle and uh, uh, tensile fascia, uh, fascia also he can take and bridge the uh, area. Isn't it not uh, advisable? Sir? Tensile fascia to do bridge what? Uh, extensor uh, okay. uh, for a minute first. Replace the tendon. He's, uh, he's uh, planning a free flap. Uh, he can also take the tissue like vastus lateralis muzzle he's taking. Yes. He can take the tendon also and uh, can bridge at the same time. Yes, dear. What is your idea? Yes, sir. Madam has suggested something. Have you understood it? Uh, yes, no. uh, yes. yes, sir. Uh, that, that is possible, sir. Uh, that, that is possible, sir. So again, I'll come back to what will be the position. If you are not repairing the tendon, what will be the position of the I mean, limb or and the ankle uh, during this phase? Uh, sir, I'll keep it in slight uh, uh, dosiflexion, sir. 90, de 90 degree at So 90 degree is called the neutral position. Neutral position, sir. Only neutral position. Sir. Why you want to do that? To prevent the shortening of the Achilles tendon because of the... Okay. Any other reason? And okay, suppose you have kept it in the neutral position and the flap has healed nicely, and you are waiting for the uh, tendon graft. So, during this phase, the flap has healed. What will you advise to the patient? Uh... Very important advice you have to give to the patient till you are waiting for tendon repair. The passive movement of the toes. Passive movement of the toes. Why toes? Why only toes? And as well as the ankle, sir. Ankle. Ankle. If the ankle gets frozen or if there is restriction of movement, then any tendon surgery, you need movement, yes. uh, passive complete movement of the joint distal to it. Yes, sir. That is hand, ankle, it doesn't matter. So the uh, the ankle has to be mobilized. There okay. is no point of repairing the punctured uh, tube of the cycle if the chain is damaged, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. So you have to keep the ankle or all the joints distal to the level, passively mobile. Yes, sir. Yeah. Dr. Umar, you want to ask something? No, sir. All has been asked. <clears throat> In the present era, I think mostly people will go for the free flap. Jesse Abni Bola. Right. It should be the first option in such a wound. That is my take also. That it should be the first option. And nowadays, students can tell free flap as the first option. And then if they are asked, if you have no expertise or like that, then they can go to the local options. Yes. But uh, you will agree. Yeah, carry, carry on. Carry on, time, examiners don't use to take up the free flap at the first option 12 years back or <clears throat> 13, 14 years back. <clears throat> but the time has now come that examiners very eagerly take the free flap as the first option. Yes. Because now it is being done in every institute, every unit of the plus surgery. Yes. But so the, you should not this. But local options are there. They are to be known and they are to be told. Yes, because uh, everybody will not be employed in teaching institution and will have the yeah. left and yeah. right. Uh, yeah. 
So because you need a team, a sociologist and everybody is so important and many a time they don't spare time when they are in private sector or in, in some other situations. So they must know both the options. I'm not telling that the deep lab should not be done. But they should most have, of the time, students I have, fumble. Okay. I have visited several uh, institutes where free lab is done left and right. At the same time, I have seen in the ward, even cross leg lab is lying. So, That's right. so it happens. So, uh, I mean, the they, local they should know the whole spectrum of the lab. That is the purpose of uh, you know, postgraduates to know about it. Otherwise, they feel handicapped in some of these situations. Suppose the free lab has failed and you don't have Wait, the guts to, guts to do another free lab. So people will go for even cross leg lab. Forget about the local regional lab. They will go for cross leg lab. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Another, thing, another issue is sir, it's the multi-trauma. Say, for example, the patient is having a head injury. We, he may not be in a position to actually undergo a long procedure. So we'll have to do something very short and fine for actually doing the giving the cover also. Yes. <clears throat> actually, there are many patients who cannot be ready for, cannot give J even. No? Some people are very frail like that, that you cannot do long procedure. You cannot give them general anesthesia, whatever is required. So you have to take every patient as a separate one, individual patient. And I have seen most of the students fumbling on the local options. Free flap, they can tell very easily this free flap, vessel, this donor vessel. But when it comes to the local options, they a little bit fumble. They are caught on that. I have seen this. This is my experience. I have seen exam. They fumble on those local options. Because the examiner asks because the candidate may be in any situation in future after the post graduation. So they should be ready. They should know. Absolutely. So, Sam, can you just tell me which? Vessel, will you connect it to your free flap? Uh, sir, I'll connect the artery um, end to side with the proximal uh, anterior tibial artery, sir. And vessel end to uh, the vein end to end with the uh, one of the vena committal, sir. Why vena committal? You could have connected to the long saphenous or any of the uh, short saphenous. So, so uh, the superficial uh, venous system might be injured due to the Contusion, sir. There is a severe trauma, sir. Okay. Let us imagine that there was no severe trauma. Then what would you do? Pardon, sir? Would you still connect it to the uh, vena competitors or uh, would you, if you are really going to connect, what way will you connect it to the superficial system? Second, use both vena competitors, sir. No, if you are only going to use one vessel, of your, having only one good vessel for your flap, for your ALP flap, which one will you connect, connect it to? Will you connect it to the uh, superficial system or will you connect it to the deep system? I shall connect to the vena committee. Okay. Why any particular reason why you do that? So the same, sir. The, uh, the deep vessels are less likely to be injured, sir. Whereas the superficial okay. vessels are more likely to be injured and high resistant flow is there, sir. The... And you have your vessel adjacent to the vena cava, and it is less likely to uh, actually throw. Yes, sir. Right. But my question is, are you going to use only a facial cutaneous uh, ALP flap or uh, would you include the muscle also? Flat, flat, flat. Uh, sir. Uh, uh, I would actually, uh, actually, I would include the muscle uh, because there is a, it's a, a fragment of bone which is avascular and all. But uh, the problem with that is the muscle, the flap will be very bulky, sir, if we include the vastus lateralis. So part uh, of the vastus on, lateralis just, can just be hold, included. Just hold on. Just hold on. You said about something about avascular bone. Is any part of the bone avascular? Va not avascular means, sir, uh, it is like a comminuted fracture involving the bone. So uh, even after fixing, uh, it would. it is better to give a good vascular supply if 
with the uh, muscle flap rather than a tissue cutaneous flap. That is why I would take a part of the vasus lateralis along with my flap. Uh, and I wouldn't take the entire muscle cell. So you want to fill in the defect with your vasus lateralis? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh. And uh, what is the size of the uh, flap that you will take? Would you take the exactly the same size or slightly bigger, slightly smaller? I'll uh, take a slightly bigger flap, sir. Mm -hmm. How yeah, big? Because How much bigger? Uh, since the pedicle of the is small, so I have to reach up to the uh, anvil artery where I am anastomosing. So I would take a preferred bigger flap. Sir. Come again, come again. So I would uh, go for a larger flap. Okay. Why do you go for I a larger have... flap? Why do you go for a larger flap? How much larger would you take it? You're correct, but you just tell me the explanation. Uh, sir. sir, actually, uh, the uh, ALT pedicle is not that uh, long, sir. So I have to reach the uh, middle of the leg to anastomose, sir. So I may have to take a uh, some part of the. Uh, ALT pedicle, what is the length of the ALT pedicle you can get? And is there any way to increase the length of it? Increase the length here. Can dissect up to the profundus, sir. Okay. A huge length. Pardon, sir? Uh, that's very long if you're actually going to. Uh, it is like up to the profunda. No? So it's pretty long that your vessel is going to be very long. And okay, the second part of the question is like, what's sir asked? How do you, okay, you're going to assume that you're going to, you feel that you want to go to the middle third of the leg can do. So how do you actually plan your flap in such a way that you are getting a long period? I would uh, place the uh, skin territory more towards the lower thigh, sir. Yeah. So that's the appropriated proximal head. Hello, sir. Yes, Dr. Sandeep. Is uh, so that's connection problems. Ah, connection problem. So in the meantime, let me ask you whether you do a, a pedicle flap or a free flap. Uh, yes, there is a lot of edema on the flap. Yes, sir. Have you observed that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So why does it happen? Whether it is a free uh, flap or a medical flap, there is edema. Uh, First stop. The, the lymphatic uh, supply is hampered, sir. Only lymphatic? Venus. As well as the venous, sir. Venous as well as lymphatics. Yeah. So both these systems are of uh, tremendous importance because many people just ignore it. The flap is okay and if ultimately, Patient comes for follow-up after six months or so and says that, sir, this looks very ugly. He doesn't give you credit for resurfacing the defect or uh, dealing with the compound wound. Sometimes they will say that uh, this is too big, uh, too thick. And it, then they request you, can you, you know, reduce the bulk? 
uh, or sometimes they will go to another surgeon and tell the same thing that so and so and so did this flap. I don't like. I can't show my limb, and uh, there is difficulty in wearing shoes. Can you reduce the bulk? So that is why this is important. Uh, in long run, you will you will come across such patients. So uh, yeah. you must know the importance of lymphatic and venous drainage and how to uh, sort of uh, augment it by certain methods. So venous and lymphatic both are important. You have already said. Now how to uh, you know help these patients. You must have seen in your institute during your stay, the flaps are looking bulky and edematous, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So flap reduction can be done later on, sir. So what do you do? Debulking. What do you advise? No, debulking is comes much later, or there is a thin flap, ultra thin flap, and so on. So many things can be thought uh, before transferring the tissue as per the requirement. For example, in the sheen area, it looks very bulky because there is no subcutaneous tissue almost. But whereas in other places, it may not look that bulky. But postoperatively, what do you advise to the patient? You can keep the limb elevated, sir. And uh, elevated. Uh, elevated means above the level of the heart. You can keep it, sir, over two pillows. Uh, and uh, later on, after the flap has settled, you can we can advise a compression garment, sir. Okay. What else? And uh, what is more common? I don't know. Dr. Uman will tell you. Can you advise any massage therapy? Yeah. Ah, yes, sir. Uh, manual lymphatic drainage therapy can be done. Sir. Yeah. Especially towards the proximal side. It is very common everywhere. It is actually a combination therapy. You ask the patient to keep limb elevated. You are you go for the compression therapy. You go for the massaging, right? Everything yes, adds up for the good results. Yes, so yes. you have to emphasize this to the patient very uh, strongly. Yes. Yes, sir. And and it should be done as soon as the flap is. You feel that flap is will be able to tolerate all these procedures because more you leave. Suppose after six months you start doing it. Then you miss the bus. Yes. Then you get the result very easily. One point regarding this massage. In one of the talks, one of our seniors told that if you have a flap in situ, pedicle flap, for example, groin, you should do the massaging in that groin flap towards the pedicle. It helps in the reduction of the edema of the flap and it settles well. And after that, I did in two, three flaps. And I got very good results. If sure. you do now, if you do have groin flap, I have learned this. That if you go on doing massaging when still the flap is pedicle after three days or four days towards the pedicle, it settles well. Edema is well settled. If edema you have seen for the five, seven days, it subsides very quickly within two, three days. Just you do just kind of a needing sort of thing. Needing sort of thing towards the pedicle and it settles very well. And this I, this I have seen also that it go it goes very well. Yeah. So this massaging can start from still when the flap is there only after four or five days. Not to talk of when you were doing the massaging later on when the flap is taken well and all that. So it can help in initially also and later on also. Sir, to jada sir is more experienced than I cannot say anything. वो तो यह दिखाने के बराबर होगा. Sir, uh, another thing, sir, uh, uh, Sam, uh, when you are answering questions, when somebody is asking you a question, 
what will you do for getting the edema down exact something like that so when you answer you must answer as though you're a consultant so when you answer you should not tell i can do a massage you should tell i will do a massage isn't yes, it yes, so sir yes sir yes okay. yeah yeah so that is how you have to answer that's how what an examiner expects you to answer yes okay yes. because within a few hours you are going to be the same as the examiner both are going to be consultants yes oh, the only difference is that your uh, the experience difference is only there both of we are both of us are going to have the same degree mcs plastic surgery correct no so your answer so, should be definitive this can be done this is possibly yes. done these these sentences are not good for uh, examination yes sir actually you are the doing person you are doing yes sir. i will do a i will anastomose with this vessel yes sir it is your doing just just yes, i want sir. to ask you regarding how comfortable you are with end to side anastomosis you said i will do end to side anastomosis na you said or i ah yes, sir uh, uh, personally i have not done end to side i have done end to end anastomosis but end to side i have not done much sir doctor doctor sandeep has raised this question you should first of all say what you will do it is my advice yeah. if you are comfortable to, with end to end speak of end to end but examiner will then ask you end to end is not possible you have no vessel or like that what the situation can be then what will you do then you can say that i can do end to side there can there you can say can but you will do end to end anastomosis right what first of yes. all what you can secondly if you are not comfortable vascular you can say that i will do the pedicle this should be the idea because you so, will say so, i will do the, uh, how many alts we have seen you will say i have seen one alt during the three years then it will be no answer that i will do a alt flap three alt flap so uh if you're going to do a end to end anastomosis in this particular case because obviously you have actually done end to end anastomosis previously okay so you're going to plan to do a end to end anastomosis what are the precautions that you'll do to make sure that your flap survives you know that you don't have any untoward there are two things that can happen one thing is that the flap can necrose and go and die out and the second thing is that you might actually lose your limb also so what are the precautions that you take in both the cases Uh, sir, in yeah. in two and last month, sir, I will only plan after uh, seeing a uh, definitive uh, CT angiogram or some. Uh, uh, I'll make sure that the other vessels are uh, patent, like posterior tibial. And so, in this particular case, was the posterior tibial patent? And the tibial artery, sir. Uh, in uh, this case, was the posterior tibial and anterior tibial both patent? Yes, sir. Yes. It was. Yes, sir. Paid. On the Doppler okay. Doppler study, it was there, sir. Both. Okay. So, would you do any other test to make sure that uh, you will be able to do N two N N S two? Sir, or rather, before doing N two N N S two, would you do any other any other? Sir, uh, I'm not getting you, sir. uh would you do any other test before actually going on to do this particular case you have done a doppler and the doppler the report has come that anterior tibial patent posterior tibial patent dorsal aspid is also uh, patent so ask But how can you do, do that whole system is patent okay. regarding both the vessels why you know sir yes correct Ah, how the system is the system whole system patent anterior tibial posterior tibial whole system, whether it is patent or not, how can you confirm it? Yeah, as we do in the upper limb, lower limb, how can you? Can is there any? Sir, clinically, I can do a reverse anterior tibial patent. Yes, sir. What is reverse anterior? 
that I can uh, uh, see Sorry. for the uh, antiretinal and posterior retinal patency. I can assess by uh, blocking one and uh, seeing the other is pulsating and seeing the uh, regular Doppler waveform uh, on SpO2 by putting the SpO2 probe, sir. Okay. And okay. So, can... so you want to confirm the important thing is that you have to confirm that the circulation is complete. Then there is a connection between the anterior tibia and the posterior tibia system. Okay, that is, is that what you're looking for? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that is a very important thing that you have to see. And then on table, will you do something else? So I will put a vascular clamp to the uh, anterior tibial artery and yeah. see if there is uh, this pulsation as well as the saturation drop. The, the, there is proper Doppler waveform. In worst case scenario, you can take a needle and then if you have any doubt, you can take a needle and just give, give a small lesson and see if the vascularity is there. But that is very important. These two things are very important. Otherwise, at some point of time, you might land up where uh, you might not have a communication between the antigen and post-tibial and you are going to lose few those for that matter. So that is something that you should not land at. So this is very important. Okay. So that is what I wanted to Okay, what vessel, uh, what uh, uh, sutures would you use for doing these anastomosis? Artery and pain. Uh, sir, I will do, uh, sir, I will use uh, 9-0 uh, nylon sutures, sir. What needle? Uh, nylon suture, sir. What needle? Needle. You've got a spatulated needle. You've got a cutting needle. You've got a reverse cutting needle. Which one will you use? The taper cutting needles. Correct. Taper cutting. So these things should be, what I'm trying to assess is how often you have done. Because when you are fumbling over here, my take is that, oh, this guy is not been doing it. But if you have been doing it, immediately the answer will come. Yeah. Okay, I'll be using a yes. taper cut. So this is how an examiner would be examining you. Okay, so you must be quick in your answers also. Fine. And uh, how will you, in the post-operative period, how will you, uh, what else will you do in the post-operative period after you finish your thing? What are your post-operative protocols? Postoperative routine postoperative protocol for every free flap is that uh, we'll give uh, clexane and uh, low molecular weight heparin prof uh, prophylaxis will be given, and we will ensure uh, adequate hydration. And uh, uh, every hourly uh, monitoring of the flap by pricking bar scratching or scratching will be done to assess the uh, the blood flow, sir. The uh, whether the bleeding is healthy or not, sir. Fine. Any other questions? Hello. Dr. Umar? Sir? Patajari, sir? Most of it. He has presented it very well. In fact, he has presented yeah, yeah, it very well. Yeah. His, his detailing and documentation is uh, quite impressive. Thank you, sir. We'll go on to the yeah, next also. thing. I think potters are there. No? We'll go on to the next potter. So can I have a comment on him? Please, please. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Presentation was very good as for the exam is concerned. But I have a few points to make out. Number one is, uh, after debridement, you have not told the true defect that is going to happen in measurements. Okay. Number two, when you do not have a true measurement of the uh, um, <clears throat> defect, Obviously, the flap you are going to design, you cannot make it. Secondly, you must have the options and the uh, lint cloth or you use whatever method to find out the flap which you are going to uh, cover it. And that flap has to be modeled as per the defect. And it must be seen in planning in reverse. So that you find it is possible to have the flap cover of the whole of the wound without any tension, keeping in mind that you haven't done. 
or if you have done, it's okay. And thirdly, regarding the decision making for a choice of a, a pedicle flap or a free flap will depend not only in one factor, so many factors have already been discussed. But again, in one case of uh, this nature, what happens always, the orthopedic surgeon takes over the case first and put the external fixator first. So the plastic surgeon has a limitations in executing the flap if it's required primarily. So depending on the contagiousness of the wound or if it is a fresh wound that within hours the patient has come, so your decision has to be made if you can ever do a primary flap cover so that you can prevent a lot of problems like osteomyelitis of the bones or loss of the bone or even uh, other tissues like tendons and other things. Regarding the neurovascular, the neurological about the uh, nerves, you have not told us the details about the nerves, the motor as well as the sensory nerves distal to the injury. Those are also very important to uh, know regarding the status of the limb and about the future uh, improvement in the, uh, the reconstruction procedures. Thirdly, about the free flaps, it depends, again, anterolateral flap has recently come out, but the convention and easier flap will be a lattice model side. So that is a very easy flap with a very good diameter of the pedicle and also the venic committance. So it will all depend on situation of where you are working with the protocol you are maintaining in your institution. So, but again, I one case of my resident second year senior, he did was something I was also astonished, not only it was good. He took a vesicatinous flap, infrarily blessed from the other limb. And it was not a conventional cross leg flap, but he used that vesicatinous flap for covering a lateral aspect injury, compound injury. Uh, with fractures, and uh, it covered it very nicely. It was about eight centimeter into eight centimeter defect. So it all depends what planning you are making and possibility of planning in executing with a uh, what we call planning in reverse. And that too is a uh, demo of all this. What I told about the defect, the, the template, then you have a lean cloth and a flap which has been already made, and you it's so many a times the examiners will ask to show that what you theoretically speak has to be on table as a planning almost you are doing in the operation theater. So that's why whatever in the first day, SAR has gone also examiner to my place. And uh, we have about 27 people have passed MCS from my center. Professor Bhattacharya also examiner to them. So next day we have an operation uh, of the same patient which has given a long case. So that not only you just talk detail about in long case, second day you have to execute that particular operation. So why I tell you that which you can make it and uh, as a surgeon going to be a consultant and that uh, best possible methods has to be done. And that thing is general principle I have told all about, but it will depend on the merit of the case. And only why I have to tell that like uh, Ganga, no? Raja and uh, Rajseka, you have to be a good uh, coordination with the orthopedic surgeon so that they don't put the pins wherever they desire to do it without knowing a flap which you, you are going to design and you have to uh, put it for the coverage of the defect. Okay, sir. Thank you, Thank you sir, for uh, your... Thank you for your... Sir, but, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Arun, sir, also. Uh, this is what, what Arun, sir, told is a very important point. That is that orthopedician and a plastic surgeon always have a touch because one orthopedician would be doing the debrima under regular vision and we would be doing the debrima under magnification. Thank and for you. any good debrima to take place, we have to have magnification. Thank you. That is one thing. Second problem is that when we do a debrima, we always take out all these uh, bones without any vascularity. That is one area where the orthopedician is very angry. He wants all the bones to be retained and we feel that the bones would actually cause some osteomyelitis later and that could actually, infection could actually ruin the flap also because the vascularity, the pedicle might be just under this particular uh, thing. So that is one thing I think that we have to emphasize that the plastic surgeon should be doing the debrima under magnification and it should be a senior person doing it, not the junior most person doing a debrima. Because mm -hmm. debris is the most important thing of the flap, all that to hold treatment, I think. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank
actually what happens when you visit different uh, institutions as examiner and you get a long case with exposed bone or devitalized bone lying in the orthopedic department and then they are shifted for examination of plastic surgery so Absolutely. Uh, and, and and this is universal throughout the country so it is rather unfortunate for the patient that uh, both the teams do not simultaneously see and plan in the emergency OPD. So if that is done, if this can percolate in the institutions that a combined team effort without any ego clash uh, will benefit the patient best, I think that, sh that should be the protocol of every institution. Yes, sir. Well, Otherwise, exactly it can... it's on lying can... and uh, we get a good case for examination description, etc. But for patient point of view, this is not good. But this is happening. This has happened in the past. And I have been examiner for 35, 40 years. This is happening in the past. And this is happening till now. No, sir. The Ganga protocol is a senior consultant in Ganga used to see the case. And he takes a decision in what to be done. We take consultant from the orthopedic side. No, I'm so talking about the okay. academic institution uh, in general. The government academic institution. Where yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. You are telling the, your experience and it's a fact. Yeah. It's a wonderful discussion. Sam presented uh, very well and uh, uh, all aspects and options were discussed and uh, all seniors, they have contributed their experience. Uh, we prepared few spotters, but the time is uh, uh, now 8.15. Yeah. Uh, Sandeep, no. shall we do it in the next session or? Uh... Yeah, I think we should do it in the next session because it's already yeah. Saturday night. If you keep doing, our spouses and children are going to be very angry with us. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. So we have uh, uh, leg defect sessions uh, in uh, later uh, sessions also. So we will uh, incorporate. Uh, sir, Bhattacharya, sir, and uh, Arun Chaudhary, sir, Dr. Umar, Sandeep, uh, and Sam, I thank okay. one and all uh, for uh, making this uh, uh, session successful. And uh, we'll meet in the next Plastic West on Saturday. Yes. I'm, I, oh, am, thank you. I am honored and delighted. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Dr. Thank Dr. Thank you, sir. Dr. Lakshmi, Dr. Umar, and also Dr. Dr. Sandeep. And Dr. Abhuruti also, Dr. I think. Sam, who has presented nicely. Keep it up and improve more and more. We'll be very uh, proud of thank you, you thank when you we really thank perform you. in the uh, in your exam. Just need out to, of curiosity, I'm just, uh, I just Dr. Want... Abhiguchi, uh, who yeah. joined the US also. <laughs> thank you. Very nice, very nice. You you nice. stayed out <laughs> throughout the program and uh, uh, thank you.